So a few highlights about Spike GLX. I'm losing my voice. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get through this talk and still be able to speak. Um, there's much more material on the slides that I'm going to say, so I'll only be mentioning a few of the things that you see. So your homework, there's really no homework for this, but if there would be any homework, it's to go back and read the slides and understand all the material that I put on there, which I think is all useful and hopefully interesting. Okay, so let's go. Um, first thing I want to say is that everything that you need uh, for Spike GLX and its associated uh, tool set uh, for post-processing can be gotten on the download page. Here's the link for it. Um, I think in the community, it's become clear that uh, many people are using old versions of the software. Uh, and I would encourage everybody to get on to the latest version of Spike GLX and all the other tools, uh, because really there's been a lot of bugs that are fixed. Uh, when you write out data files, you're going to be writing richer metadata. And metadata are a record of all the settings that you used, all the hardware you used to create uh, the experiment. And richer, fuller meta metadata are going to be a better record of what you did. And you'll be taking advantage of the latest and greatest features that are always making the software easier to use. And um, There's no really no reason to use the old versions. The new stuff does everything the old ones did. Um, for anyone who's new to Spike GLX, we have a, a quick reference guide uh, that's a, a visual tour through all the main features of the software, and I highly recommend new people to take a look at this. Um, so the website has videos and helpful user manuals and other documents, everything that you uh, should need to get started uh, using the software. Uh, I want to point out uh, in that metadata, there are some new items that are uh, might surprise you, maybe you didn't know about. Um, I'll talk in a second more about the fact that we have physical uh, probe geometry information that's getting stored in there now. Uh, we do uh, integrate with Pinpoint and Trajectory Explorer, Trajectory Planning Tools, and the anatomy data that you'll see in the software is now is stored in the metadata, which is useful. And there's some error information that's brand new. Uh, so if uh, wires have been wiggling uh, while you're doing your run, it's possible that there could be some lost data samples and these error flags will record that fact. That's good to know. Um, this is what the uh, download website looks like. And I'm merely circled uh, some of the items to bring attention to where those are on the download site. Uh, let me go back to the geometry information in the metadata. Uh, every run records uh, which sites you are recording from on each of your probes. And we used to record that in something called a shank map. That recorded where sites are on the probe as just indices in a grid. And we've retired that and replaced it with a new scheme, which are the physical locations of all the sites on each probe in microns uh, relative to a coordinate system. Uh, you can read about that more in this metadata 30, um, which means phase 30 metadata uh, document we have on the website. And there's a figure here describing the coordinates that are used for that information. Uh, for people who are relatively new, again, despite GLX, I want to mention that uh, there's a, a sort of flow diagram that I have here, or flow discussion, how data moves through the system. And when you're configuring a new run, which you do by going uh, to file in the main window, choose new acquisition, you get this configure dialog. The main tabs of this dialog are across the top. And basically, you should go through these tabs in order. This follows the flow of the data. On the devices tab, you specify which pieces of hardware you're going to use. In the next tabs, you specify the settings that you want to use with the hardware specify how you're going to synchronize uh, the hardware uh, with each other. And then uh, these tabs are for uh, how and when you're going to save files. And then on the save tab, where you're going to put this data and what you're going to call it. So this is the flow of everything. And as you go through the tabs to get context uh, sensitive help on that tab, you can click down here. It's going to change as you go through the tabs. 
Also, you see a lot of the windows have this question mark button in, in the title bar. Click that to get help on this window. Uh, so I want to show you a few things about the devices tab. Uh, in this uh, big box are all of the slots in your chassis. These are places you can plug in probes. So you basically would plug probes into your chassis and then check the boxes for where you put the probes to tell Spike GLX what you're going to do. But there's a new device coming very soon called a one box. It looks like this, like a pizza box. It's very small. It's going to be very affordable. You can plug a few probes in, into it and also use it to record a few non-neural channels. Um, and this thing plugs into your computer via USB 3.0 cable. It's not a chassis, it doesn't work with a chassis, it doesn't have anything to do with the chassis. So we need to give it a slot uh, so that it will show up in this table. That's one thing. Also, we've given you the ability now in Spike GLX relatively recently to have virtual slots uh, so that you can run the software without having any real hardware. So in order to do those things, there's now a configure slots button that opens up a dialog, the one on the left. Uh, you're going to see the hardware that you've enabled, the hardware that you have connected. Uh, so you want your one box turned on for this. You'll see it in the list. Click on your one box and you can assign it a slot number. Now it'll show up in that table. Also, you can pick a slot number, click add, and add simulated devices into your uh, list of hardware here. And you can plug probes, virtual probes into those. So let me talk briefly about virtual probes. Uh, we have the ability now to replay an existing data file back through Spy GLX as if it came from a real probe. To do that, click on simulated probes. That brings up the dialog on the right. You can browse for any file that you already have and assign it a slot port and dock. So now when you check the box uh, for that slot port and dock, the data will be coming from a file instead of from a real probe. Let's move on to some things on the next tab, which is the iMac tab. Uh, there's a new checkbox here called low latency. Check this box when you're using uh, remote SDKs to fetch data from Spike GLX, you'll get that data coming into your remote program with somewhat lower latency. Uh, it costs a little bit more CPU cycles to do that, uh, but that's probably worth it to you. Uh, check this box to do a special kind of run called a survey run. What this does is sample the activity everywhere on all of your probes. Uh, it goes bank by bank by bank, samples activity, then the next bank, next bank, next bank, till Every probe has been completely covered, and it saves all that data to a special survey file. And we'll talk about how to use that uh, to select sites uh, for, for your next run in just a minute. Uh, check this box to give every probe a history buffer that has uh, your choice of bandpass filtering, and it has spatial filtering. And these uh, new buffers are going to be used to give a much better signal to background than we've had before. Uh, for listening to spikes as audio or seeing the spike activity in the shank viewers and the new spike viewer. Um, now, you've learned already uh, that uh, there are many more sites on probes than there are channels that you can read out. And uh, to get to uh, a selection dialog, to choose those sites. You double click uh, under IMRO uh, for the probe that you're interested in, and it pops up a graphical site selection dialog that looks like this. It's pretty simple to use. Uh, you can you you have 384 sites that you have to program, or 384 readout channels. So, for example, you might choose uh, uh, n boxes to put down uh, where, let's say, n is uh, four. Uh, in that case, there'd be 96 channels in a box. So these green boxes are where you're clicking, where you're selecting sites. You just uh, click on the probe, and it puts down a box, and those are the sites that you're going to read out. Um, now, this is much more useful if you can do this in conjunction with looking at activity on the probe so you know where to put your boxes. And there are several ways to do this. Uh, one way is during a run, the graph window is going to open. Uh, click on the shank viewer button here. That opens up um, the shank viewer with the view tab selected. You can use these tools to colorize activity on the shank. Uh, and then you can click on the edit tab of the of the viewer, 
and you get the edit controls, now you can put down your green selection boxes right over the activity of interest. While we're looking at this view, I want to point out that you can right click on shanks or right click on traces that will pop up a menu of additional things you can do with the channel that you clicked on. You can listen to it. You can send it to the new spike viewer that's coming in the next release. Uh, you can turn channels on and off and do a number of other operations on those channels. Uh, I want to talk about the anatomy uh, stuff for just a second. So uh, again, Pinpoint and Trajectory Explorer both can send uh, anatomy information, spike to legs. To make that work, you want to be running a run. With the graph window open, click on the shank viewer, and then it's on the view tab of the shank viewer that you're going to see the anatomy information. So you'll have uh, a legend box that shows the regions uh, that are being sent to the software, the names of the regions and the colors that they have. Click on the shanks checkbox when you want to colorize your probe according to that data. Click on the traces checkbox to colorize the traces in the graph window by that information. I want to show you a couple things on the offline uh, spike, uh, offline file viewer. And I think I'm running a tiny bit long. I'll be done pretty soon. Uh, so you go to uh, file and choose open uh, and you get a file viewer that you can use to open any existing run. You can see your traces. You can filter them, apply a bunch of operations, find noisy, bad channels. Now, if you scroll in time, uh, first of all, if you open up the shank viewer, and then if you're scrolling in time, you'll see activity of the uh, wherever you are in the file on the shank viewer. This is another opportunity to go to the edit tab of the shank viewer, and you can lay down uh, selection boxes on top of the activity that you see, save that for the next run. I talked about a special survey type of run. If you open that with the file viewer, now you can, in the shank viewer here, you can select uh, sample whole survey and click update. And now you'll see an integration of all the activity on all of the banks of the probe painted all at once. So you see where the activity is on the full length of the probe. And now you can, again, lay down boxes on top of that activity. So this is super useful. Also in this viewer, there's a an export feature where you can uh, export a subset of, of a full file, uh, choosing which uh, just the traces that you want or the time range that you want. Uh, almost done here. Um, I put a lot of work recently into scripting of Spike GLX, where now it's possible to fully control uh, the software and the fetch data in real time and do whatever you want to with it. Uh, so you can basically extend the functionality of Spike GLX with your own remote programs. And you can do that in any of these languages. And this is also quite low latency fetching of data. And if you turn on that checkbox, you see that you have uh, a significant improvement in the latency for the fetching of real data, of real time data. And the last thing, last slide here, Spike GLX is more than just the one program. Uh, there's a whole bunch of helper tools, especially to do offline uh, data processing um, that I maintain and that have grown up with Spike GLX. So something that's unique a little bit about these tools is they understand the full range of options that you have in Spike GLX about save, selective saving of channels, what kind of gains you're using. You can have different gains on different channels. Uh, there's all kinds of subtlety in the way the data are stored that uh, these tools understand and will manage correctly. So there's uh, Apache T uh, can filter, remove artifacts from your data, extract TTL events, um, the times of events that you can then uh, translate uh, to coordinate uh, those events with uh, spike events. And you can do that with this T prime program and finally, there's a pipeline that Jennifer Colonel uh, uh, wrote. She modified it from uh, one that Josh had started. And this is uh, tailored for Spy GLX data that uh, runs the data through all of these tools and Killasort, making all of this very easy for you to do. And that's it.